Yugoslavia is ours. Our racial superiority has been established. The Yugoslavian Desperados has been crushed. <laughs> Bandits. That's what they are. Bandits. And they will be treated as such when I get my hands on them. The Yugoslavian armies have been defeated. Belgrade and every other city of importance has been occupied. And yet these, uh, these, uh, Chetniks. These Chetniks are holding seven divisions here when they should be on other fronts. Colonel Schacht, you're responsible for transport. And yet the Belgrade Niche Railway has been cut three times within a week. I have doubled the patrol, sir. Then triple them. You, sir, you command three regiments of Alpine troops. Is the task of driving a few cutthroats out of the mountains too much for you? It is difficult to combat guerrilla tactics with regular troops. The enemy is... I will not have these outlaws called the enemy. It's preposterous. Germany is no longer at war with Yugoslavia. The country is conquered. Under international law, these brigands can expect no mercy when they catch their leader, this, uh, this, uh... Mihailovich is his name. Traja Mihailovich. Whatever his name is, he shall suffer for his refusal to lay down his arms. My orders are to rid Yugoslavia of this man. We know that he is somewhere in these mountains. Alive or dead, I want Traja Mihailovich. Alexa, tell me what you think. Six trucks, no seven, and a command car. German supply column, heading for Kotor. That much is correct, but they are Italians, not Germans. And there are eight lorries in all. They're the enemy, that's enough for me. Remember, I want as little damage done to the trucks as possible. in command. Major Francesco Guido Badero surrenders to Colonel Draja Mihalevich. Mihalevich, the outlaw? Oh, yeah, I mean, oh, yes, Colonel Mihalevich. What have you got in those trucks? Yes, the trucks, I really do not know. But it is all here. It's all... At least it should be. We are in luck, Alexa. Machine guns, ammunition, tinned fruit. Dehydrated vegetables? Good. Now shall I have them shot? Colonel, I'm afraid we'll have to abandon the trucks. They're nearly out of gasoline. That's unfortunate. We need those lorries. You would like to save your necks, wouldn't you? You will spare us, senor. But they would hang us if the shoe were on the other foot. I know, but we need gasoline. We can't run trucks on Italian blood. It's too thin. Attach a transmitter to those wires, then see if you can get German headquarters in Kotor. Star headquarters, put me through to your commanding officer. General from Bauer's office. This is Colonel Draja Mihailovich speaking. Who? Draja Mihailovich speaking. No, Colonel Mihailovich. I am not interested in discussing anything with you except the terms of your surrender. Oh, I beg your pardon. Don't go away. I was not addressing you. One moment. That fellow that uh, Mikhailovich is on the phone. May I ask what he wants? He has captured some Italians and demands that I ransom them. I warn you, you will face a firing squad when I get my hands on you. When do you get your hands on me? 
Come now, General, what am I offered for these, uh, these allies of yours? Allies, indeed. I wouldn't give ten marks for Mussolini himself. But I don't want money, I want gasoline. Of all the colossal impudence, never will I give precious gasoline for useless Italians. Would you like me to tell the Italian high command of your refusal? The impertinent scoundrel is threatening me. We cannot afford to insult Italy openly just yet. Perhaps it would be wiser to give in this time. How much do you want? Suppose we say a tin of gas for each soldier. I've got a lieutenant. He ought to bring five tins. That's highway robbery. Why, it's awfully pretty. I'm insulted. A couple of captains uh, should be worth ten tins apiece. Well, perhaps you're right. Make it eight for the captains. Now we come to the commander. He's a major. Psst. Ask a hundred. Seventy-five. The captain's eight. I refuse to be ransomed for less than fifty. The major thinks he's worth fifty tins. All right, all right, General. Calm yourself. I'll let him go for 20. He's no good to me, General. I'll give him to you cheap. Ten tens of low test gas, and that's final. He doesn't even ask for Ethel. That'll be all. I'll bring you the file of Lubica Mihailovich, wife of the rebel leader. Yes, Colonel. Have you heard about last night's outrage? Yes, I heard about it. Our largest barracks burned to the ground. My men are taking over 400 houses today. Your soldiers may move in immediately. It's getting so that none of us is safe after dark. For every German murdered, I will hang 50 civilians. A hundred. And meanwhile, garrisons of all occupied towns must be dotted. But once I catch their leader... If you catch him. In my opinion, we can take Mihalovic through his wife. Four weeks ago, she was in Belgrade. We missed her only by a few hours. We traced her to Nish, but she escaped again. No doubt she'll keep on escaping. I have every reason to believe that she is somewhere in this district. Then why hasn't she been arrested? Why hasn't Mihalovich himself been taken? I'll handle the military without any question from you, Colonel Brockner. And I will conduct the Gestapo. I believe my methods will be more effective. That's all. Every identity card will be re-examined. No one will be permitted to leave the city until a horse-to-horse -horse search has been made. We will find out whether Fomi Halevich is here or not. Your papers. Search the house. Outside. Your husband is a machinist. My husband was killed in battle. Too bad, we hate skilled workers in the Reich. To save you the trouble of asking, my husband was killed too. And my granddaughter just was not old enough to marry before the war. No one else in the house, sir. Where is your husband, Frau Radek? He was a soldier. He's dead. And your children? They're with me in the house. Call them. George! Anna! No one here except me too, sir. What's your name? Who wants to know? George. George Radek. I am I Radek. He brings the milk. Your papers. I'm sorry to be late, madam, but these days it is easier to get into heaven than pass the soldiers at the city gate. You, sir, could perhaps speak to them. Get out of my way. Good evening, madam. Lubitz. 
Oh, oh, my dear, let me look at you. Are you all right? How about you and children? That's the important thing. The papers you gave us have worked so far. That's fine. And the milk peddler brought me your message. I made him change clothes with me on the spot. Did he have any trouble? Well, the guards at the city gate couldn't understand why I wanted to make two deliveries the same day. Did you have to <laughs> kill the guards, Papa? Now, listen, you Mirko. A good soldier never cuts off his own retreat. Remember, I have to leave the city again. Papa, you look so funny. Do you think so, Miss Mihailovich? Miss Rodgers, you mustn't forget. Oh, that's right. Oh, Draja, is it wise to take such chances? Now, don't worry. I'm not taking more chances than are absolutely necessary. Maybe I'd better put the donkey in the shed, Papa. You see, he is a real chetnik. <sighs> it's a good idea, son. Then if the police come back, they will think I've left. Those Germans can't catch a chetnik. I'll help you. <laughs> You must be hungry. I have some stew. It's pretty thin, but there is bread. You're tired? A little, but I'm happy. Whenever things aren't going so well in the mountains, I think of moments like this. Makes everything all right. The Germans say it is only a matter of time until they catch you. You don't believe that, do you? They're strong. They have so much. Yes, but we are stronger. Because we've got something they never had. The will to be free. You see, our people don't like to be conquered. And so they never will be. That is the truth, isn't it? Yes, my dear. Very good for me, Draja. And if sometimes I am weak, it's because I love you so very much. Henry, you're tired, sir. We hit the donkey in the shed. We couldn't find any straw, so we picked some flowers. He seemed to like them just as well. I don't blame him. I'm hungry, too. Supper will be ready in a moment. Mother, set up the fire. We have a bottle of wine from the cellar, myself. What, wine? Yes, we've been saving some for you. Mirko, fetch my torba. <laughs> kind of heavy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I wonder what is in it. May I look? Yes. Dehydrated vegetables. That's a present from Mussolini. <laughs> Mother, put more wood in the fire. You must broil these. No, no, you don't. The steaks are for you and the children when I've left. There are plenty of deer in the mountains. Just a few pieces for the stew. A stew is no good without meat. All right. Dear me, did you shoot it? Yes, I did. When are we going to the mountains with you? Mama said it would be soon. I wish I could take you with me, son. Oh, why can't you? You're the leader. You can do as you please. It's because I am the leader that I cannot do as I please. It doesn't make any sense to me. You don't mean that, do you? No, not really. Only I'd certainly like to shoot a deer. Or some Germans. Mirko. I'd especially like to shoot our new teacher, Fräulein Spitz. Now listen, sir. It's right that you should hate Germans. Only be careful not to shoot so wildly at the enemy that you, uh, that you hit your friends. Someday I'm gonna shoot her. Just before I do, I'm gonna tell her who I really am. As far as she knows, your name is Radek. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Wonderful, my dear. Mmm, mm, that smells good. Mirko. Bless this food to our use, our Father, and thus to thy service. Potato soup had never smelled like that. Right, quickly. My coat.
Do you wish to see my papers again? Never mind your papers. Meat? Where did you get meat? For my ration card, once a month. This is deer meat, isn't it? I don't know. Taste it, Sergeant. See what you think of it. It's deer meat, all right, Captain. It's delicious, too. Since when do they sell deer meat? Have you been patronizing some black market? Oh, no, sir. Let me see your ration card. these people in spite of our food regulations. May I have my ration card back, please? No, I'm going to find out how you happen to get deer meat in Couture. You give my mother back that card! George! I suggest you teach your brat better manners. Come on, Sergeant. Yes, I know. Moreover, all persons suspected of aiding or sympathizing with Draja Mihalovich will be subject to immediate arrest and execution without trial. Have you got that? Yes, sir. Two paragraphs. It is further decreed that Yugoslavs not engaged in labor approved of by the Gestapo chief will have their ration cards taken away. How many male prisoners are there in the Kotor concentration camp? About 2,000, I believe. Notify the camp commander that I intend to ship these men to Germany. They can help at this year's harvest. All of them? Naturally. I was thinking of the transportation problem. Send a memorandum to the railway authorities to arrange for their removal next week. Your fellow countrymen, my Fräulein, must be made to realize that we mean business. What the Gestapo does is no concern of mine, Colonel, as long as I'm left free to earn my living. It's a very practical philosophy. One that should be adopted by more of your people. Thank you. to search you. Colonel Brockner trusts me as much as he trusts anyone. 2,000 prisoners to be sent to Germany to work in the fields and factories. Those men were soldiers. Now they're slaves. That's what the Germans think.
all free. Good. They'll get them started through the mountains. This is the only one left alive. Maybe you want to question him before we finish him off. No questions. Come on. A waiter. Perhaps he would like to do us a favor. If I save your life and let you go, will you promise personally to give Colonel Wilhelm Brockner a message for me? Who wouldn't? Nobody wants to die. And listen closely. I want you to repeat it word for word. Tell him. And how does it happen that you are the only one left alive? There must be some reason. Well? Well, speak up! The rebel leader Mihailovich, he gave me a message to deliver to you, Colonel. All right, come on. Out with it. Uh, I, I'd rather not, sir. I want that message. Word for word. Colonel Mihailovich's compliments, sir. And he wishes to thank Colonel Brockner for the reinforcements sent him. Colonel Mihailovich assures Colonel Brockner that he can use these troops to good effect. Take it. Get out. Without help from the civil population, that Mihailovich wouldn't be alive today. We should increase the tempo of our propaganda in this country. Methods which have been successful elsewhere don't work here. The fools are united. And they won't change. I don't understand it. In England and America, it has not been difficult. We remind Americans of their old quarrels with England, and we tell the English that Americans want to run the show themselves. They have made some progress. But these people only laugh. I will get at Mihailovich through his wife and children. I beg pardon, sir. And the people will turn them over to me. Are you sure you can break down the people's loyalty, sir? All it needs is a correct method. You see, a full belly reinforces a strong will. But an empty one makes traitors of us all. Citizens of Kotor, no food of any kind will be sold or given in any manner by any person to any non-German inhabitant of the city of Kotor. In the case of any violation, both the fed and the feeder will be hanged. This applies to all people, regardless of sex or age. This order will remain in effect until the wife and two children of the rebel leader, Draja Mihailovich, are turned over to the Gestapo. We know that the family of this outlaw is somewhere in the city. So it must be obvious to even the most stupid of you that the sooner they are apprehended, the sooner you will eat again. I shall wait five minutes. are up. Look, Victor. Look, what are you doing here? I've come to give myself up. Oh, don't be a fool. But all these people, the children. It wouldn't do any good. Can't you see that it's just another trap for Drasha? There's no use your sniveling around here for mercy. You've heard Colonel Brockner's offer, and it's fair and generous. What's the trouble here? No trouble, sir. If you women at Kotor had any sense, you'd have food by tonight. Now, please go. I'm busy. Seems to be the only language they understand. Yes, sir. Wait 
for the five minutes. All right, let them start. Sorry to disturb you, Colonel, but the men thought I'd better see you. So I understand. You see, sir, I'm from the 10th Infantry Regiment. And a very good regiment, too. Most of the men come from Koto. If you've got anything to say, spit it out. Danilo. What are you trying to tell me, Sergeant? Well, sir, there's a lot of talk about the Nazis starving our families. Of course, it may be just a rumor. It's not a rumor, Sergeant, but it's the truth. The men are very upset. They think that maybe they ought to get the wives and children out of Kotor. When you took the Chetnik oath, you knew you might never see your family again? Yes, sir. We knew that. But a man can't watch his wife and children starve without doing something about it. Can he, sir? No, Sergeant, he can't. I swear to you, the people of Kotor will not starve. Thank you, sir. I told the men to trust you, and they do. Only... I understand. Suppose you can't keep that promise. I must. Once the Nazi find out the effect his business has on the men, he will treat the whole country in the same way. Today, Kotor. Tomorrow, Belgrad. And the day after, someplace else. Exactly. And in a few months, weeks even. There goes our army. Gentlemen, we've got to fight fire with fire. You see, Colonel, your scheme doesn't work. We had the same thing in Northern Greece. The people would rather starve than betray their leaders. It takes a few days for hunger to have its full effect. My spies report that your decree has had absolutely no effect on Mikhailovich or any of his men. Yes? Excuse me, sir. There's a Serbian peasant here with a message from Mikhailovich. Send him in. I come from Draja Mihailovich, sir. He wishes to meet with General von Bauer under a flag of truce at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I'm General von Bauer. Oh, I beg your pardon, General, for speaking to the wrong man. Tell Colonel Mihailovich I shall be pleased to receive him. And now take this man out and have him shot. Aren't you a little ahead of yourself, Colonel? After all, you must deliver the message back to Mihailovich. Let's caught him back to the Chetnik lands. Thank you, sir. And thank you, General. Well, it seems that my methods are beginning to bear fruit, after all. I think Mihailovich will be shot in the public square, in full view of the populace. Well, let's at least respect his flag of truce until we hear what he has to say. Naturally. Simon, be right on. Down. Our business is with your commanding officer. Telephone. Hey! Get him! Colonel Mikhailovich? Yes. Allow me to apologize for the behavior of these sentries. General von Bauer is expecting you. If you will be good enough to follow me. I don't like this excessive courtesy. The cat thinks he's playing with the mind. Likely a fire squad for us. I know that you are unarmed, but the German army has its regulations. Will you permit me? Of course. I realize you must search us.
follow me? Before we begin, Colonel Mikhailovich, I wish to make one point clear. When you, General Vasilovich, surrendered, the Yugoslavian army capitulated. Therefore, I wish to advise you that your action in carrying on guerrilla warfare is illegal, that we cannot apply international conventions to you or your men. That's the German viewpoint, General von Bauer. On the other hand, the people of Yugoslavia never surrendered. And we are the people of Yugoslavia. But the rules of war are clear. The German army is recognized as such by the entire world, while in the light of accepted international law, your, shall we say, organization has no recognizable rights whatsoever. I do not understand these big words. You fight us, we fight you back. No? How can it be wrong when men fight for their country? Oh, it's quite simple. We have the right to execute every guerrilla we capture. As well as the right to starve defenseless women and children? It's no use discussing human decencies with them, Draja. Give them the ultimatum and let's get out of here. Ultimatum? Yes. We expect the people of Kotor to have a real healthy dinner tonight. And if not, you will attack Kotor in full force, eh? No. No, precisely not. Will you step to the window, please, Colonel? What you see there is a firing squad. I didn't think for a moment that you would respect the flag of truce. A flag of truce is a question of military law and honor. I believe the general mentioned that we do not recognize you as a military enemy. Don't apologize, Colonel. I understand that after we have finished our business here, you will have a shot. As far as I'm concerned, our business is already finished. Quite so. We are ready to leave, gentlemen. I assume, of course, you have accepted our ultimatum. What? You are only to assume that you and your aides will be escorted to the square. And then, at an order from me, you will all be executed. I'm sure you won't give that order when General von Bauer realizes that to do so would mean the death of his wife, Helena, and his daughter, Magda. Helena? Magda? You Nazis take everything for granted. You regard your little Yugoslavian campaign as a holiday. You brought your families along. Do you mean to... He's say? lying. Don't believe him. No need for you to worry, Colonel. We didn't take your wife as a hostage. Even if you had, it wouldn't make any difference to me. So I thought. That's why we took your... Uh, Carlotta is the name, I believe. It's pure invention. I thought you might take it that way. A trinket Colonel Bruckner gave his lady friend to show his esteem. And this is for you, General. My wife's wedding ring. My men have orders to execute the hostages in two hours. You can't intimidate me with your threats. I shall still give the order to have you shot at once. Give that order, Brockner. By heaven, I'll kill you. Come, gentlemen. One moment. Do you intend to release the hostages? They will be held only until the citizens of Kotor have received one month's supply of rations per family. We have no desire to make innocent women and children suffer for your crimes. Did it occur to you, Mikhailovich, that we might be more loyal to the German Reich than to our families? Oh, yes. We thought of that, too. But as my American friends say, I had an ace up my sleeve. My Montenegrin bandits have just captured Field Marshal von Clausewitz. In the eyes of your Führer, I imagine a marshal outranks mere women and children as a hostage. Besides, we hold about 600 of your officers and men as captives. If you are not returned into safety, they too will be shot to the last man. Colonel Bruckner, will you have the goodness to open the door for us? I shall be honored to escort you to the gates of the city in person. Thank you, General. That's what I would like to know. <laughs> Danilo, how did you do it? <laughs> I wish to thank you for your courtesy, General. 
I assure you, the next time we meet, it will be a different story. I'm sure it will. Uh, one question. How did you manage to capture Field Marshal von Clausewitz? I'm sorry, General, but that's, uh, that's a military secret. Auf Wiedersehen. Instructed to commit to memory the Horst Wessel song. We shall now sing it. Bow together. Let's hide the flag and hide the every column. March on that day with firm and steady tread. Horst was the first martyr to the new Germany. To sing the song in his honor is a privilege. Before you can grasp the fundamental principles of National Socialism, you must be purged of your criminal tendencies. Yes, they are criminal. Otherwise, there would be no help given to that arch criminal what was that? What about your father? The village is a patriot. And who is your father? He's dead. child psychologist. So, if a child attempts to deceive me, I know it immediately. Do I make myself clear? Well, I'm not sure. Perhaps you have not an orderly mind. Perhaps I haven't. But you were saying... I can get information from a child when it would be impossible to obtain the same information from its parents. Was it one of your pupils who blew up the ammunition dump last week? I'm not joking, Fräulein. What I mean to tell Colonel Brockner is that I can help him arrest the rebel leader. Mahalovich? But he's in the mountains. To be sure. But his assembly in the mountains. You discovered Mahalovich's family? I prefer to give my report to Colonel Brockman first. It's so late, I doubt if the Colonel will return. Perhaps you'd like to make a written report. The Colonel favors written report. That is possible. short and concise reports. Quite correct. Thank you. I'll see the Colonel get to as soon as possible. You wish to speak to me? 
Are you getting clear? Yes. I did, sir. I wish to speak to you on a matter of national importance. Step into my office, please. I don't suppose it occurred to you that you might help your sister with her shoe. Not a word, sit still. She squirms. <laughs> Now, run along to bed, both of you. Good night. Good night. Good night, my darlings. No time to pack. They're here. Well, let them arrest me. It won't make Draja give up. Hi, dear. Well, I let them in. Don't open the door. It's too late now. Hurry. They mustn't find you here. What do you want? Please tell me what you want. You admit your identity? Well, what if I do? You have given us a good deal of trouble, madame. May I be seated? Thank you. I'm going to ask you a few questions. And I expect you to answer. I shall not answer any questions, Colonel Brockner. No. No. You may arrest me if you like. You may have me shot. But that won't stop my husband from fighting you. He'll never stop. You are a woman of convictions as well as courage. But tell me, what makes you think that I'm going to arrest you? Isn't that why you came here? Not at all. Where is the Yugoslav known as Mirko Mihailovic? What did you say? Mirko Mihailovic. He's here, is he not? You've made a mistake. He's just a child. Shall I search the house, sir? Do you want him to do that? Why? Why, he's asleep. He... What do you want with my son? He's only 10 years old. He's asleep, I tell you. He's had his supper and he's gone to bed. Well, if I can't tell you anything, he's... Is that you, Mama? Are uh, you Mirko Mihalovic? Of course he is. What do you want? You will be silent. In accordance with the powers invested in me, I hereby arrest you on the charge of harboring the rebel Draja Mihalovic. Papa's not a rebel. He's a soldier. Don't you dare touch him. You'll leave my mother alone. Let me go. My mother alone. You don't want your son shot for resisting arrest, do you? And no more interference. Mama, what's happened? But the fearer, lover of humanity that he is, is patient and forgiving. He doesn't intend to punish Dragja Mikhailovich for failing to understand and appreciate his sincere offer of friendship. Instead, the fearer makes a solemn promise that if Draja Mikhailovich will accept the honorable terms of an armistice, which General von Bauer will offer him today, peace will again come to this unhappy land. <laughs> <laughs> 
Have it, Doctor. Well, what do you think of my idea? At least you cannot refuse to discuss the situation. True. But will you be deluded by that, I was? I happen to be a Prussian Junker. If I make a promise, I keep it. Then I suggest that you promise him a bullet in the brain. If he could kill them all, that method might prove effective. But there are always people left to remember. It's their memories we cannot kill. That's precisely what I have in mind, General. Their memories, I believe, will prove to be the key to our problems. And that's why I wish to go with you to this so-called peace conference with Mihailovich. You're not afraid of meeting that fellow in his own territory? Wait and see for yourself. Here they are. I say let's hang them. And lose our reputation for hospitality? I don't trust them. Neither do I. But I don't mean to let them know it yet. This way, please. General von Bauer of the German Army, Colonel Brockner of the Gestapo. What do you do, General? Colonel Brockner? You remember my aides? Major Danilo, Lieutenant Petrovich. How do you do? It was my understanding that this meeting was to be private. My aides will remain as long as you keep uh, him. In that case, perhaps Colonel Brockner won't mind retiring too. I'm able to make our offer unassisted. Of course. Should either of you gentlemen need me, I shall be at your service. You must get tired of making war with the aid of policemen. I feel for you, General. Oh. Let's get down to business. We want peace, we are prepared to pay for it. So far, we see eye to eye. First, my government is willing to grant you a bill of amnesty. Your crimes will be forgiven, the past forgotten. It's very considerate, I'm sure. Second, you will be made commander-in-chief of all Yugoslavian forces. In other words, my present position will be uh, confirmed. Quite so. All reasonable requests pertaining to your personal fortunes will be granted. In other words, I can be as rich as I please. Let's say any request will be granted if it meets with the approval of the protector, whom we will appoint to rule over your country. Protector? Not really. You don't suppose we turn the country over to you, lock, stock and barrel? No, I didn't expect that. But I do expect you to turn the country back to the people. I beg your pardon? Your German reasoning is typical, General. But quite unacceptable. You reject our terms? Terms? You offer us no terms. Rather, you now demand my unconditional surrender, and you promise the complete subjugation of my people. Maybe the Colonel has some terms of his own. I'm willing to consider them. That's very magnanimous of you, I'm sure. But I'm afraid that your generosity is based upon a misconception of our strength. Let me remind you that my Chetnik army, small and ill-equipped as it may be in comparison with yours, happens to be in an impregnable position. In these mountains, we are safe for your tanks, your planes, and your artillery. In these mountains, we can hold out indefinitely against your infantry. And in these mountains, we shall remain a constant dagger threat to the Nazi forces of occupation. That's all you have to say? Are you quite sure? No. You ask for my terms. Very well. I'll offer you the same terms you offer us. Until that day when Germany unconditionally surrenders to the Allies. Until that day we have either destroyed or driven every Nazi from the soil of Yugoslavia. Until that day we shall continue our fight for freedom. So be it. You have the fate of the people on your head. Yes, Colonel. You'll come back, General, from Bauer to Scar. From now on, you may expect no mercy. No mercy at all. See, Colonel Mihalovich, we are not too proud to learn from you. When we arranged this meeting, I suggested to your wife that she accompany us. As you see, she accepted my invitation. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh. Darling. Oh. 
Where are the children? They haven't been harmed, Draja. Really, they have treated us quite decently. Oh, kindness and consideration. Yes. Draja, they've promised peace if... If I surrender? Yes. Do you believe them? I don't know. Please, there will be an end to this torture and starvation and murder of our people. Listen, darling. If I could believe a German promise, do you think I would go on sacrificing the people's lives as I have and as I must? No. No, of course not. Look at the nations who have been taken in by Hitler's lying offers of collaboration and, and friendship. Czechoslovakia, Denmark, Norway, Belgium and France. Are they any better off than the nations who fought to the end, like, like Poland, Holland and Greece? No. Do you realize that if we gave in now, most of our next generation will have German fathers? Yes, I realize what you say is true. But still... Still what? Raja, I haven't told you about Mirko. What about Mirko? They are holding him as a hostage for you. Raja, wait! You want your son killed? Don't you see? That's why they weren't afraid to come here. They put him in prison? Yes. You'd be proud of him, Draja. Do you know what he said when I told him I was coming here? He said he guessed if you could get along without me to look after you, he could too. They think they can beat me through my son, but they can't. Draja. Many million Mirkos in this world. Mirkos and Francois, Youngs and Olofs and Chiangs and Tommies and Joes. Draja, they'll murder him. They will, I know they will. They might. He might even murder you and our little, our little girl. There's nothing they won't do. Yesterday, more German troops began to arrive. They were passing through Kotor on their way to Albania. When I woke up, I heard them. When I went to bed, I heard them. And this morning, I still heard them. Hundreds and hundreds. Don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yes, my dear. But it doesn't make any difference. Numbers are not important. But they are. Even if you kill a hundred Germans for every man you lose, you can destroy them all. Lubica, the face of our son is all you can see now. I understand that. But have you looked closely at that face? Close your eyes and look at Mirko's face. It's a good face, isn't it? There's life there and spirit. But if he gave in now, there would be a day that he wouldn't have to look anymore. Yes. That's it. It's the look that free men have. Isn't it? Yes. That's it. That's it exactly. Colonel Brockner to come here. Yes, sir. You have something to tell me? Yes. Before you go, I want to thank you for your generosity in permitting my wife to come here and see me. Oh, not at all. In fact, she may remain here with you if she wishes. That's very nice of you, I'm sure. But first, Colonel Mihalovich, let me give you my terms. If at the end of 18 hours you guerrillas have not begun to disband, if you yourself had not surrendered to the German army, every man, woman, and child in Kotor will be executed. Is that good? I'm ready to return to Kotor. If our children are to die, I want to be with them. Goodbye, Draja. The ultimatum will expire at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Danilo, we still
still respect the flag of truce. I thought you would, Colonel. Why don't you let us kill him? In that case, the massacre of Kotor would start at once. Now at least we have 18 hours. Yeah, they mean it. They'll kill her. I know that. I also know the death of my family won't satisfy them. Unless we surrender by 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, the entire population of the city will be wiped out. We've got to take Kotor within 18 hours. But the Nazis have fortified every approach. And yet if we were to scale those mountains and enter the city from the rear... Equipment would be out of the question. The men would have to fight with what they could carry on their backs. And against us, the Nazis have two artillery regiments and three of mechanized infantry. Roger, it would be a slaughter. Then what would you have me do? Disband our troops and surrender as the enemy has ordered? No, of course not. But why? Why not? Oh! Don't look so crestfallen, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Captain Sarwo, have every available horse and pack animal ready to break camp at sunset. We're making an attack, sir? No. We are retreating toward God's goal. Yes, Colonel. You will observe, Savo. I said retreat toward Gatsko. I didn't say we were going there. Yes, sir. As you say, the German forces in Kotor are too strong for us. Therefore, we have to make up a strategy, but we lack a man at equipment. You mean lead them into a trap? Exactly. And our simulated retreat will be the bait for the trap. Of course, you realize that if the Germans think we are surrendering, they will simply slaughter us with machine guns. Yes, it won't be like them to neglect such an opportunity. Therefore, we shall offer them the perfect place to ambush us, the Gatsko Pass. But how will you convince them that we are apparently surrendering? The Savo will lead a small force of our men to the foot of the pass. He will take all the available pack animals and string them out along the trails to give the enemy the impression that all our forces are disbanding. And our main force? I will lead them over the mountains and attack the city from the rear. I know Kotor will still be well defended, but we will meet them. Now, Alexa, here is what I want you to do. I've already contacted Natalia. She will provide me with the necessary papers. Good. Now, remember that battery on the east perimeter, which commands the city, must be in your possession by the time I arrive, which will be at approximately 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. I know Mikhailovich's position in the mountains. I'm going to finish him off if I have to throw every available soldier into the fire. That speaks the military man. My way is better, believe me. My methods may have no effect upon Mihailovich, but his troops will give up in order to save their families or what's left of them. Yes? Are you sure? Yes. Tell Colonel Fleischer to prepare a sortie at once. Three regiments of infantry and four batteries of artillery. I observe the report that the Chetniks are already beginning to leave their hiding places in the mountains. Many small bands are descending towards the plains. What did I tell you, General? The exodus of the children of Israel has started. And you will have the opportunity of playing the part of the Red Sea. Yes. Only instead of opening up to create a safe passage for them, I'll be waiting there to drown them in a sea of fire. Your job is perhaps the most important of all. Let the Germans get well into the trap before you set off your landmines. That's vital. I understand. Come on, hurry! Hurry! Come on over here! Get it quick! Is it time for the torches? Yes. And have the men sing loudly. Yes, sir. Come on! Light your torches! Light your torches! Well, why do we light our torches? The Germans will see us. That's the idea, my boy. We want to be sure to attract their attention. And now, Chetnik, let's hear you sing. Sing! Sing! Sing!
Our reconnaissance reports that the Chetniks are heading for the foot of the Gatsko Pass, sir. Force? Yes, sir. They are lighting their various torches. Good. Uh, they are disbanding. You see, they are complying with our terms. You hold. Gatsko Pass! Meet the Germans in Gatsko Pass about the same time we reach Kotor. Forward! numbers six and seven on the east perimeter. Great. I'll order the gunners off duty and substitute our own men. They're hiding in the woods right now. I suggest you better go, sir. Right. I hope it works. Don't worry. By tomorrow, Dreiser will hold Kotor. Right. any accomplices. This is an outrage. I'm Captain Luther of the 4th Artillery. In that case, you must be my twin brother. Captain Paul Luther at your service. The Chetniks are nearing the foot of the pass now, sir. Good. If they come forward to surrender, annihilate them. Armstrong Larson! Roger must be about ready to attack. Let the horses continue down the trail on their own. And what do we do? Didn't you hear Roger say it was all a matter of timing? Gentlemen, we must all attack the city simultaneously. Illich, you take the west gate. You take the harbor road. Danilo and I will storm the east gate. Is that clear? Such an old trick, Fräulein. I'm ashamed of you. Did you really think I was taken in by it? No, sir. You will tell me why you wish to impersonate Captain Luther. I'm afraid I'll have to let you guess that, Colonel Brockner. Perhaps I have already made a very shrewd guess. I have instructed Captain Luther to comply with your forged order. He will be ready for your check mix. Yes? Firing squad is ready, sir. Very well. Proceed at once.
something has happened to Alexa. If the battery remains in German hands, they will turn the guns on the city and destroy it. Keep a hundred men with you. Those guns have to be taken or destroyed at all costs. Step to the window, please. General von Bauer might be foolish enough to be taken in by your Chetnik trickery, but I am not. The execution of your countrymen is starting immediately. Hold on the sea and are in a better position to carry on the fight. Today our flag flies over more than 20,000 square miles of our country, and I give you my solemn promise I shall not lay down my sword until every inch of Yugoslavia is reclaimed from the invader. If there are Nazis listening, and I rather imagine there are, I have this to say to them. As long as there is a Yugoslav able to carry arms, this holy war will continue. Neither German might nor German frightfulness can deter us from the goal we have set. Complete freedom for our people.